Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. I hope you've been enjoying all of the home theater tours that we've been featuring here on the channel over the past probably six or seven days. Recently, I took a trip up to Wisconsin and Illinois, had an incredible time getting to know some really, really great folks that have some really awesome home theaters. So if you haven't checked out all the videos, I'll have a playlist at the end of this video that you can check out um, in a row. And each day I'm also adding not only the home theater tour, but then I'm doing a, a, another video like I am with this one just kind of sharing my thoughts on that particular home theater since we were in such a rush while I was up there in Wisconsin and Illinois that we didn't get a chance to do something like this and kind of share my thoughts on that particular home theater. So today we're going to be talking about Balu's home theater. And so I posted that this morning. Balu has a really, really cool home theater, beautiful home, and just a really, really sweet family. Um, his wife was so uh, just hospitable and she was like, can I get you some chai tea? I'd never actually had chai tea. So I'm like, sure, I'm willing to try something new. Man, it was super good. And, uh, but they were just so sweet. And so Balu's room is kind of a work in progress. And you know, when we first arrived, I'm like, oh wow, what do we do? Because the room isn't totally finished. But I thought, you know what? This is gonna be a great opportunity because the reality is all of our rooms pretty much are our work in progress. I know mine is. Um, over the past 13 years that I've had my home theater, I mean, it has grown just exponentially over the past 13 years. I'm always making changes, whether it's uh, replacing my AVR to a processor or upgrading from a 103 inch screen to a 150 inch screen or replacing my 13 year old theater seats with some nice theater seats from Valencia. And so it was cool seeing his room kind of unfinished and he was willing to show us that. It's like, look, I've got holes in my ceiling where I've already pre-wired for Atmos speakers, but I haven't installed those yet. I haven't, you know, purchased those yet, but I thought it was really, really cool. And uh, Balu, man, I'm glad that you got inspiration on being able to lift up your screen. I know that is one feature that I absolutely love here in my home theater. Looking back at some of the guys from this home theater tours, um, it was difficult for them to remove their screen. I mean, not like totally difficult, but they had to take it off and move it out of the way like another room so we could kind of get access to the speakers and just having a system in place where there's hinges and you can lift up your screen. You know, I've got gas shocks on mine that hold it up, but even if you got a wooden stick that'll prop that up, however you can, hey, it works. Some guys I've even seen like Chris, um, he has uh, hydraulics on his. So he hits a button and it actually lifts up on its own, which is really cool as well. So there's a lot of ways that you can do that um, to be able to gain access really easily behind your screen. And speaking of behind his screen, he's got the 215 RMs. Man, those things are monsters from JTR. Big dual 15 inch drivers, massive coaxial, uh, you know, uh, kind of mid-range driver and tweeter. Um, just a great, great setup up front. Having that anchored right behind your screen is going to be absolutely incredible. He had talked about, you know, there's some things that he would like to upgrade. He's got his uh, projector that he wants to eventually upgrade to something a little bit nicer, maybe a 4K down the road. And what I always tell people is that enjoy the process, enjoy the journey. Um, you know, it's one thing to be able to just write a check and and purchase an entire home theater and have somebody come in and install it in a few days or weeks or maybe a month and then you're kind of done and then you just enjoy it. But to me, I've always enjoyed the journey. Um, I'm not necessarily looking for a destination in my home theater. I'm just always striving, you know, what else can I do? What can I tweak? What can I change? And uh, not that I'm, I'm unsatisfied with what I have, I'm very satisfied, but there's always something to improve on whether it's your calibration, whether it's, you know, getting a mini DSP and dialing in your subs better so you got a flatter frequency response uh, or so forth. And speaking of subs, he's actually got a really old school, I think it was the uh, SVS, um, oh my goodness, I forget the model, PB plus, like PB 12 plus or PB 13 plus. I remember back in the day when I started kind of even just dreaming of having a home theater I was looking at one of the SVS PBs. I think it was the plus uh, 12 plus or 13 plus. I can't remember, but it was the one that had 
um, dual, I think it was down firing 12 inch subwoofers. Everybody said, man, it'll make you question the integrity of your walls. And, uh, but it's still going strong. So being, uh, I saw some of the comments in the, uh, in that video talking about, you know, he's got, uh, a sealed subwoofer, I'm sorry, ported subwoofer up front and sealed in the back. Um, and so you can run and mix sealed and ported. It's just a little bit more difficult. You're probably going to want to get something like a, a mini DSP two by four HD to be able to dial that in. And some mentioned, you know, well, it's on the wrong side. He's got both subwoofers on one side, which is a no, no. Again, this theater room, I mean, literally the reason why the, um, the RS2, the JTR sub was in that back corner is because he had a, um, we were actually having some cabling issues. One of the cables was causing uh, just some, uh, it just really wasn't working properly. So we moved it to that back area of the corner. Everything was great. Um, so that literally was just there, just a test. So I don't know where he's gonna end up putting it. It's definitely too big to put up front. So it'll probably be on the left right or the rear right um, of his uh, theater room. And so um, just a lot of things that, that he just did really well. I love the style of the cabinet having the dual doors with that nice um, dark glass or uh, not glass, it was more like a uh, kind of like fabric in the front to hide the equipment. And then when you open it up, he's got these beautiful glass shelving. Um, and <laughs> I like how he said, um, I had to make the bottom one wooden and not glass because of that big, massive, beautiful pair sound halo amplifier. I mean, that thing is a beast. Definitely don't want to put that on a glass shelf and have that thing come crashing down. That'd be a bad day. And then he's got an Arkham. And so I've, I haven't had an opportunity to really experience Arkham before. Um, and so that's a pretty nice high-end uh, uh, processor. I think it's a processor. I don't know if it's an AVR or a processor, honestly. I'm, I'm not as familiar with that brand. Um, but just a beautiful setup there. He's got an Oppo. I think the 203 and so those are kind of vintage now that Oppo's not making those and so it's cool that he was able to snag one of those and and so just a really really pleasant room um I, <laughs> Balu I love how you said you left the uh um the black and white um oh my goodness what are they called uh light switches you kind of left that there just to remind you hey that's one of the upgrades I want to do is go to something like maybe a Lutron Cassetta um, so that you can actually control those with your voice, uh, connect them to the little echo dot, I'll just say that, um, so that it doesn't interfere with you guys' setups. Um, but being able to you know, control that, like in my room, I've got five of those, and so I can control the front arch lights, the front lights, the rear lights, the LED around my screen, and the lighting behind my screen. So being able to separate that and control that through voice uh, commands is actually pretty cool. So that's one of the upgrades that he wants to do as well. Um, same thing with seating. He still hasn't picked out seating yet. Uh, he's looking at doing two rows and so uh, not sure where he's gonna do with that, but I love the colors of the room. It's just very, very pleasant, just really nice, um, just very inviting. Um, and speaking of inviting, man, I, I got to share this story. So we're sitting there and his son, which you saw at the very beginning of the video, he's talking to mom and, and we were kind of all talking a little bit and she's like, shh, be quiet, be quiet. And so I could tell he was, he had a question, but I didn't know what it was. And I, I said, does he have a question? And she's like, well, yeah. And he's like, who's the YouTuber? <laughs> and, uh. I just, I was kind of messing with him. So I look over at Nick and I'm like, well, this is him. He's the famous one. And he, he was like, I mean, his eyes just lit up. And it was so cool just to see that this generation of children are growing up and, and it's a viable aspiration to be a content creator, um, to be someone that puts out videos and makes videos for the education and enjoyment or entertainment of others on a, on a platform like YouTube or uh, TikTok. And you can make that as a viable source of living, um, just like I've been able to do since uh, January of 2020. And so, but it was so cool. And then at the very end, I mean, we had we'd finished the video, I had packed up all my camera gear, packed up all my lighting, and, uh, and we're just talking, you know, just, 
again, just having a great time with Balu and his wife and his family. And like I said, they were just so sweet and so hospitable. And um, while we're talking, uh, the sun comes up again and and he said something about be, being in the video or something. And so Tony and I kind of looked at each other and we're like, we, we need to make this happen. We need to put this guy, put this young man in a video. I mean, can you imagine being uh, a young man his age, going to school and showing all your friends that you're on YouTube? Uh, I think his friends will get a kick out of that. And so, But he was just so excited that he's going to begin to be able to watch. Because again, this is a new build. They hadn't really even finished it. I don't even think they've they've like watched a movie yet as a family. And uh, like Balu said, he's been doing this over the past many, many, many months. And that's what it takes to build your dream, to build your, um, you know, your theater room, the the area that you want to watch movies and and uh, and listen to music. And so he's been doing that for a long time. And but it was just so cool to hear his son just say, "Look, you know, I'm so excited and I'm ready." Uh, you know, for the opportunity to spend time in here with my family, with my friends, just watching some good movies. And man, that just warmed my heart. I mean, me and Tony, we were like, you know what, that just, that made the trip worth it. I mean, it really, really was special. And and so we knew without a, a, a shadow of a doubt, we had to include that in a video. And I wanted to put it right up front, you know, because that would just, it was so special to me. But, but Balu, you've done a great job. I know your theater room is going to sound incredible. And the fact that you've got guys like Tony and Nick and all the others that are pretty close to you, they can help you dial in your system, um, help you with calibration, and just give you some some ideas on what you can do to um, to help you know get that dialed in and balanced. And but you've done a tremendous job, and I love the fact that you've got access again. Once again, I'm jealous of you guys that have basements. Um, he's able to go behind his equipment. He's got a little hallway. You can see the insulation there and easily have access to your equipment. And that's one thing when you're building a home theater, uh, I highly recommend you thinking through. For me, I wanted that was one of my requirements when I built this, or I, I say I, when I had a friend of mine build this cabinet, I told him there's two things I really just wanted. That's it. Just two main things. I want to be able to have easy access behind my screen so I can get to my speakers in case if I upgrade or if I want to show them to somebody. But then I also wanted to have easy access behind my equipment because I knew I'd be swapping out components like AVRs and amplifiers and processors. And it is a royal pain when you're just having to look at a manual, and I've done this, look at a manual, owner's manual, you're reaching into your cabinet and you're unhooking based on what you see on the manual or hooking up. Um, so that's just, it, it's kind of difficult. So Balu, having the ability to go behind your equipment, uh, man, that's, that's, that's gold. I mean, absolute gold. And so again, he's going to be adding acoustic treatments uh, to his walls. And so he can kind of tame some of the echo there and um, just a beautiful setup. And he's going to have LED lighting in the track lights. I like how he added kind of like some crown molding and just left a little gap there so that he can easily run some LED lighting up there. And then having the uh, wall outlets installed right at the end of that track, man, that's perfect. And so you'll be able to easily connect those and connect that to your system. And so he's just really thought through um, almost every aspect of his theater room. Um, he's got like six different places that he's run cables to, uh, you know, for subwoofers. I think he, he ran a RCA cable, you ran an XLR cable, and then even another cable, maybe Ethernet. And so, my goodness, man, like I said, he's just, he's set. I mean, he's got a great size room, um, so he can definitely grow his system if he wants bigger speakers, more subwoofers, or whatever. But I know up front, he's not going to need anything larger than the 215s. Those are going to be absolutely incredible. So, guys, we've got another, I think there's three more, yeah, there's three more home theater tours that we'll be doing. I'll be featuring one that has a Paradigm um, system. Another gentleman has a, oh my goodness, why did I even go down that? I, I actually looked at it right before this video. Paradigm, Seton. So we've got some Seton speakers. I, um, that's going to be a fun one. I can't wait to share that one with you. Um, and then there is one more. And honestly, it's slipping my brain what 
brand it is. But anyway, so stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm going to be cranking them out one a day uh, for the home theater tours and then another video at 8 p.m. Each day just kind of summarizing my experience with that day's home theater. And guys, be sure to check out hometheatertours.com if you want to submit yours for a possible review. And there's also some really cool merch, Home Theater Tours merch that we came up with just as a result of this tour. So if you've been enjoying the videos, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.